Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and today I'll be talking about solder joint reliability calculations in Sherlock. Uh, first, I'll start with a quick demonstration. So we're going to import an ODB++ archive from the Sherlock uh, tutorial. And we'll go through the steps of setting, setting up the simulation. It's important here to make sure you match up the part number. Sherlock has a great library of different parts, and uh, having the part number Input it correctly means that it will save you a lot of time in setting up models like this. So it's a small model. We got the parts listed. We have the model imported in. So this is a, a display of all the different types of information. What Sherlock does is that it takes a look at the, the ECAD file, the layout file, and tries to gather as much information as it can from the data so to populate the material properties and the and the package type of these, uh, of each of the components. Having the part number means that we can go in and check this with the part library. So we can update the part list from the either the global part library or your local, shared, or other types of libraries available. So I'm going to just check with the global parts library and do an update here. It uploaded or updated 221 parts in the parts list. So all the green parts, all the green items are things that came from the parts database. If Sherlock is not able to find the part, it will try to match the package. So if you have the package defined properly, there's a package database that will get updated, and it will try to use that information to update the model. Having a part matched up, means that you have all of this information already defined for you from package, location, lead, and solder. This is the information that you don't have to input by hand, so obviously it's a huge time saver when you're loading large models like this. We can see that there are a few items still not defined. Uh, sometimes you can get away without defining them, but sometimes it's helpful to, to set this up properly. So for example, in these components, you can edit it. The solder model is not defined. And the solder model, if we look at the package, it's a through-hole type of package. So we can set this to through-hole. Uh, this particular jack here is not defined. Jacks are a little bit tricky. Uh, they're set to copper. They're fairly large and heavy. And the leads are, um, are not defined because this, this may be a somewhat uncommon type of jack. Um, so we can edit this part. There's a helpful little graph of all the different types of leads that you can define for the jack here. So we're going to go with probably a through-hole lead and a through-hole model for the solder as well. Let's go down and see if there's anything else we need to mod update or modify. So these two items are BGAs, BGA676. So the lead geometry there, then is uh, the solder model is BGA and the leads. You don't need the leads, but let's just set it to leadless because we're, it's a BGA type of connection. And that's it. So this is all we need to do to set up the model. Sherlock will then go and go ahead and build a, a model based on this. We can adjust the stack up thickness of each layers. We can take a look at the components. We can look at the silk screen. Sometimes it's useful to take a careful look at the silk screen, maybe only the top to start out with to make sure everything fits in here. You can see that the U8s here are oriented incorrectly, so we can go ahead and edit them. Uh, rotate this and rotate this one. And now it looks pretty good. Let's uh, save that. Then let's take a look at the bottom to see if there are any issues. The bottom looks fine as well. Now we can check the mechanical mounting points. Um, the holes here, we have a couple extra holes here maybe that perhaps we don't need. So let's uh, edit the mounting points. So 
So we can delete a couple of mountain points. And so we have the four holes in the four corners, and that should be, we should be ready to run an analysis. So we can run a solder fatigue calculation here. Oh, before we do that, let's specify the life cycle we want. So if we're doing a typical accelerated reliability testing, we will do a thousand hours of testing, and we can load in a life cycle, for example, automotive base of windshield type of test for components that goes into automotive devices. And for solder fatigue or solder joint reliability, we're basically doing a power thermal cycling. Um, we're going from a minus 40 to plus 100 degrees uh, or Celsius, ramping up and down for a thousand hours, uh, one cycle per hour. And let's take a look at the results. All right, so it's done. If we look into the life cycle, you can see some components are expected to only last 160 hours. Um, other components are expected to basically last forever, and there's a wide range in between. This is uh, determined by the thermal co co coefficient of thermal expansion uh, of each component, as well as the PCB and, um, and the lead geometry and things like that. So if you've seen my previous videos, you'll notice that this solder joint reliability is extremely fast. We're able to calculate the reliability of hundreds of components very quickly. And that's because Strelox uses the algebraic method to calculate this type of information. On the Sherlock website, there's a published paper about solder reliability. And basically, the algebraic method looks at a component and a PCB idealized version. So for each component and PCB, it looks at the high temperature and low temperature uh, thermal expansion effects, calculates the strain in the solder joints because for every we define the size of the solder joints, whether it's a through hole or a, a BGA or a QFM package, it knows how far they are, what the size of the solder joint is. This then allows them to calculate a uh, strain value and strain energy information. And from that information, they can try to calculate to estimate the, the time to failure for each component. So Sherlock is very good at looking at a very, very large set of parts, potentially hundreds of parts, and quickly give you an estimate of which part can potentially be, uh, be uh, in danger of failure. Uh, obviously, there are, th this is a, a basic method since we're using a, a algebraic method and we're not modeling the solders in detail. My other videos um, goes through the Darbo method, which uses ANSYS to do a full viscoplastic model of a BGA package. That method allows you to calculate detailed strain energy uh, from the viscoplastic work done on each solder in the crack growth location. So that would be the other end of a very highly detailed, highly accurate simulation. That type of analysis is only uh, feasible if you can if you decide to concentrate on a couple of uh, IC, so a couple of BGAs that are of high concern to do a detailed analysis. You will not be able to, even with today's computers, run a nonlinear solder joint fatigue calculation on an entire board like this. So the tool tools are very much complementary. We can start with a quick analysis using DFR Sherlock. What we can do is we can export a model to ANSYS as a workbench journal file with the entire model geometry of the board, the materials assigned, and all the components. We can then take that model and create even detailed solder joint models for that part and run a very detailed analysis to see um, using methods like the Darbo method to calculate what the solder reliability is for some key components. So again, very two very complementary methods. One gives you a very quick and fast estimate. The other method allows you to do very detailed analysis on particular packages and gives you a, a much higher confidence in the reliability of these components. So that's a quick video on Sherlock and uh, how it does solder joint reliability. Thank you for watching and have a great day.